and L is equal to uh, P minus K factorial, and you already see uh, the binomial uh, appearing in, in, in this uh, formula. Uh, here I forgot the minus sign, so there's a minus uh, 1 uh, to the power L, and L, L was equal to uh, P minus uh, K. This is equal to P minus K. And uh, what else uh, do I have? I have the operators. So, so this was L to the power uh, K minus uh, L to the power K minus S. Uh, we write here uh, K minus S. There's a delta. And here there's S, uh, L to the power S plus L. And that is uh, N. So what you see is that the, the term S happy has to be equal to N2 in order to get. So, so, so S is equal to N, which we also could have gotten uh, from, from uh, these two, uh, two equations. Okay, so, so what we have is uh, L to the power K minus S. L to the power K minus S. Oh, uh, no, uh, I, I, I did something incorrect. Um, let, let's do it again. Uh, this is L, L to the power S times L, L to the power L. And S plus L is N. Um, Here there's uh, k minus s. So let, let me just uh, look, look in my notes uh, what I did. So I have here k minus s. That's what I have. I have s. And, and this should be uh, l to the power s minus l1. That should be the correct uh, thing. Um, S, that should be equal to uh, P minus N, and uh, S plus L, that should be equal to N. That is uh, this equation. Um, And uh, so L is equal to, so L, L is equal to uh, N minus S, so L is equal to P minus K. That's right. So this is uh, P minus uh, K, and that, that's, uh, that's better. So, so if this is uh, p minus k, the total num powers number of the total power is uh, p, and that's what we want to have. So th this is uh, p minus k. Uh, so uh, times L to the power N times minus 1 to the power P minus K uh, plus 1 uh, divided by uh, K factorial times P plus uh, 1 minus uh, K factorial. And you get that by just putting in uh, these uh, conditions. And you have to do it correctly. When I did it at home, the first time I did it was also not correct. I had to erase it, check it again until it came out uh, correctly. And now you, you choose a new var variable that um, uh, this one uh, you can uh, call um, 
so, so, so you can call this a new variable, for example, L. Then the variable L runs from a zero to uh, this one. The maximum is when uh, uh, k is equal to p plus uh, one, that is zero. And when k is equal to p minus n uh, plus uh, one, uh, then this is equal to to n. So, so in terms of this variable, it runs like that. Uh, the coefficient is given by um, minus uh, one to the power p plus one minus one to the power l. And here we have uh, one over uh, k factorial. K was equal to p plus one uh, uh, minus n. F a factorial, and this is p plus 1 minus, uh, what did I do? This is L. Uh, here we had, uh, so, 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 so k is equal to p plus 1 minus L. This is uh, L factorial. And this one we can now divide by 1 over p plus 1 factorial and multiply by p plus 1 factorial. And, and this is a well-known expression. Uh, people uh, know what the answer is. And uh, you can look it up. So, so, so this is equal to, to uh, 1 over uh, p plus uh, 1 factorial uh, minus 1 to the power n times uh, p, the binomial factor. This is so-called combinatorial identity, which you can find uh, so, I, I knew that this, this existed because I, I, I did this many times before. So, 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 so the way you, you do that, to summarize, so you tailor expand this, collect all the terms uh, you need with the combinatorial factors. There are constraints on the terms because they have to be of the form that there's exactly the right number of L's here and the right number of L's on the other side of delta. And that gives you constraints on the k of an L. You carefully look how they work out. And, and then uh, you, you sum only over the right terms. And that is uh, this sum. And this turns out to be a sum you can do. And if you do that, uh, then you get exactly uh, the result which we had to prove. Yeah, uh, this is the, the first ingredient that you have to do. And the second uh, ingredient, uh, you have to work this out for a specific uh, choice of L and uh, delta L. And uh, L is then a Lorentz transformation, uh, which I uh, gave. And uh, L plus delta, so L was a Lorentz transformation. And I defined it as minus uh, one over beta, uh, beta dot uh, K times uh, the inverse tangent hyperbolic of uh, beta. So that's a choice. And this is L of beta. And delta L is L of uh, beta plus delta uh, beta minus L of uh, beta. Right. And this is the scalar, which is the magnitude of the velocity divided by C. Yeah. Beta is uh, V over C. That's the length. And uh, beta with an arrow, that's the vector. Beta with an arrow is the vector. And uh, k, k are the generators of the Lorentz transformations. So k1 is the matrix 0, 1, 1, uh, 0, and uh, everything else uh, is here. Yeah, I know you chose to write it as a vector with k1, k2, and k3 as the components, yeah. if I run the notes correctly. Yeah. So uh, I see. Yeah. So, so uh, what, what is clear and what you need are the commutators between L and delta L. And, and that, that is what we have to calculate in the second half of the problem. And you can calculate that. What enters is, is that there are these objects. So, so the input is this commutation relation that uh, Ki commutator k and j is minus epsilon i j k times 
times S A A. And, and this is one of the uh, rotation operators. So, so, so that, that, that is, and, and, and that is why in the end you get, this is a generator of rotations. That is why two Lorentz uh, booths, booths can give a uh, rotation. Exactly because it, what enters in this expansion is the commutator. To, to, to work that out is again a lot of tedious algebra. As you can see here, you, you have to just work it out very carefully and, and then the formulas uh, come out. It is this not hard, it is really a Taylor expansion. It's a little bit complicated because you have to expand the inverse tangent uh, hyperbolic uh, to first order. It's not complicated, but it is all tedious. And uh, once you do that, uh, you find uh, the final formula. So is there an identity for uh, the R? Is there an identity for the derivative of arctan hyperbolic? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is, uh, uh, you, you normally you don't remember that, and but you can look it up. The way I looked it up, I used Mathematica, uh, which is very useful to have. You just uh, say uh, series. That's a command I type in. Then uh, arc tangent hyperbolic uh, one plus x uh, comma x comma zero comma four, and then it expands. In fact, we only need one. Then it exp gives uh, the expansion of the tangent uh, to order one. Right. Oh, what do these three do, by the way? This x is the variable in which you expand. Mm -hmm. You do the Taylor expansion around x equal to zero. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's not not. Yeah, we need it around x equal to beta. I should uh, do it like that. So we have beta plus delta beta. Then this should be uh, up to order one. Right. In fact, delta. Then, and this is delta beta. The expanding powers of delta beta at the point beta to the first order, or to the second order. But you never use Mathematica, you said. No. No, you should uh, learn that. That is how, I, I only use, I didn't use the chapter, the algebra here, it was not that complicated. But uh, you use it, uh, it can basically do all integrals that can be done. That's and, good. And solve differential equations. It can uh, draw nice figures. All the figures in my papers are drawn by Mathematica. And uh, it was written. So, so do you have any questions about this one? Mm, may I look at the second half of it for a second? Let me look at the question. Oh, why is the brightness so low? They're systematic. And then you know, after having gone for you, you can write down the general expression. Right. And now, is, is there an intuitive meaning to delta beta? Or? No, that's just a little bit larger than beta. So this, this is just an infinitesimal. It's just a very small uh, uh, quantity right. so that you can expand it. Because we want to understand if you propose two Lorentz transformations that differ a little bit. If, if we expand them in uh, this, this way. Right, and that is simply part D, right? Uh, yeah, uh, that, that is working out uh, these uh, commutators. And once uh, you have done that, uh, we are going to apply this formula with the expansion of the commutators, and we are going to resum it, which I think is actually possible because. Uh, you use uh, properties of the, the sine hyperbolic and tangent expansion. You see that what you get is an expansion of the sine hyperbolic and the cosine hyperbolic. And then, then it comes out. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, by the way, I also noticed there w I don't think there was a part C. It, it, it is it's not. Okay. And that is why they split it into 
is fit uh, delta uh, beta that's equal to delta beta parallel plus delta uh, beta uh, perpendicular. Is that familiar to you? And this is uh, parallel to beta, and this is uh, perpendicular uh, to beta. Right. So, so this is uh, beta, and this is uh, delta and beta in a different direction, and you decompose that into a vector parallel to beta and one uh, perpendicular uh, to the, uh, beta. So if the sum is equal to uh, beta. And uh, you do that, that simplifies the variation a little bit. Right. And the algebra is so simpler. One final thing, I just wanted to ask, because uh, it seems like uh, you could say that this is equal to this, where this is just... Yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah. I don't know, I just find that kind of strange, that something that intuitive actually works. No, no, you, 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 uh, you multiply by this. So you can go to the power L times e to the power L minus 1 is equal to 1. Right. Oh. And, and this is just the inverse of this. I see. So this, this should work. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 so this, this formula with the exponents and uh, the expression is actually part of a much more general mathematical formula. And that's the so-called Baker uh, 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 Hausdorff uh, formula. And that's a formula where you have two exponents, e to the power a times b, that's e to the power a plus uh, b uh, plus uh, one half uh, one half uh, times the commutator of A and B plus uh, the many other terms. And there's a famous formula. You, you can read, uh, there's a Wiki, Wikipedia page about this formula. And, right. and they give given more terms than I, I remember. So that's an interesting uh, and this is just a specific case of that. The, yeah, because here, uh, this one differs only a little bit from this one. So we expand in the difference. And exactly uh, the formula has, this is more general, because it, here we do not assume that B is close to A. Right. And uh, so, so that, that formula plays an important uh, role in the theory of uh, the B groups and the algebra. And B groups. So if you have a taken pause in group theory, you would have this formula. All right. I, uh, by the time I take a course in group theory, uh, it, uh, it will probably be a long time since I've seen this, but uh, I'll try to remember it. Yeah, terrific at it. All right. I will uh, probably try to do the actual algebra myself uh, for homework too, and see if I can hand it in after this meeting. Yeah. It, it is it's basically straightforward, but it is tedious. And uh, if you make a, a mistake, it doesn't work anymore. Right. But the important thing is that you know it works. If you know it works, then you know that, that there's some small mistake here and there, and then you can correct it. It takes some in ingenuity in the beginning, and then it's all this tedious algebra. Yeah, sure. So we have to be able to do tedious algebra. Right, I don't know about that. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's all I really wanted to do.